Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. Uh, I'm Martin Warwick. We're here in London's Docklands at a place called the Crystal, attending the Automotive IT International Congress. And I'm talking with Chris Harris, who's the Marketing and Customer Director for HR Owen. And for those who don't know it, HR Owen is Europe's leading luxury car retailer. Chris, welcome. I can begin by asking you this. A lot of the discussion that's been held at this event has been about the future of the automotive industry and the car and a lot of the discussion has been around the reduction of vehicles to a sort of lowest common denominator thing that can move people and goods around the place but not necessarily a lu in luxury not necessarily with particular elan or anything like that it's very much utilitarian but of course i guess there'll always be a niche market for those with the wherewithal to be able to but the trend of the future and to carry on with luxury cars. Is that the way you accept things are going to be? Well, we would certainly hope so from our <laughs> business point of view. But yes, I think one of the advantages that we have as a dealer group and something we've been trying to uh, use more and more from a brand and marketing point of view is our customers are into cars. You know, they, they are not choosing any of the vehicles we sell simply to get from A to B in the most efficient fashion. In fact, I would happily admit that most of our cars are probably not the most practical way of, of driving from A to B. Um, but that's not the point. It's actually about the enjoyment of the journey. It's about the enjoyment of the driving experience. And I think there will probably always be petrol heads and those people are going to want to drive cars that are more engaging for them. We obviously have the added uh, or the added element for us is you need to have a, a certain amount of wealth to, to afford the cars we sell so we internally we refer to wealthy petrol heads as being our target <laughs> target audience there's nothing wrong with that okay now we know where we're beginning from so given where you are in the market what do you what do you see are the being the biggest and most important trends in the automotive industry today well, if I can comment from a retailer point of view, because I'm sure lots of other people have commented on the car itself and connectivity and things. For us, the, uh, the, the most important thing is how can we use current technology to um, gather and order customer data for, uh, in order to serve them better. You know, our job as a retailer is to sell the cars. Uh, selling cars is all about understanding customer needs, listening to customers, and that may mean in a conversation, but that may mean listening to them in terms of the way they interact with us through email or through our website or other things, and using that information to present them with interesting offers for cars at the right time. Um, yeah, uh, 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 if somebody's just got their bonus, it might be a great time to talk to them about one of our new cars. If somebody's just made redund been made redundant, it might be a lousy time to talk to them about it. And ultimately, we need to work out ways of having those kind of conversations at the right time. Now, to do that, you're going to need data. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of discussion within the industry, as you well know, about the, 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 the coming together of the connected car, the uh, Internet of Things, machine-to-machine -machine communication, the autonomous car, the connected car, and so on, and of course, big data. Um, what, as far as HRO is concerned, is the most important, do you think? Is it that, that data that you can mine? And if so, how do you get it? And most importantly of all, how do you secure it? Uh, so, I think the most important thing you can have, and it's again a term that's bandied around a lot, but we've through two years of investment and hard work actually achieved it, is the so-called single customer view. So within our dealerships, and we have uh, eight franchises across 14 different sites, any of our salespeople can go onto our system and find any customer, and from that customer record, look at when they last transacted with us, what cars they own, when they were last in service, how much they last paid for us in service, which means should a customer come into any of those sites, possibly for the first time, they will be recognised, they will be understood, and we can start dealing with them professionally, which is what customers at our level of the market understandably expect. Just as if they walk into a five-star hotel, they expect to be recognised and treated well if they've been there before. Um, in order to do that, we've had to bring together lots of disparate bits of data sitting in after sales, sitting in certain sales systems, and actually sitting in things like email systems from when people send and receive emails. Uh, lists of people who attend events and things like that. We brought all that together onto one platform and we are probably the first dealer group in the world to use a platform called Salesforce uh, for that. It's not been used heard in, the, it, yeah. uh, in the car industry really mm -hmm. before. Um, there are several advantages of Salesforce. It's a cloud-based system, so we don't have to maintain large amounts of infrastructure. 
Um, it's very flexible, so we've been able to turn it into a car system, even though it wasn't designed as a car system in the first place. And to answer your final question from a security point of view, you know, it's, the, it's a system that the likes of Bank, and, uh, Bank of America and Burberry and uh, really big multinational companies are using. So the security model is very strong. The data is secured in incredibly secure data centers. And I would argue it's, it's probably safer there than it is in a lot of the car industry where it's on a local server in a local dealer that may not have the level of security required. That's where we are at the moment. And thank you for that. What role do you think IT and comms in general are going to play in shaping the car, shaping the car of the future? Well, again, I, I'm going to come at this from the, the sort of customer service Please point do. of view. Absolutely. I think it's, again, yeah. about bringing together uh, as much information as you can into one place so you get the single customer view. But as you referred to earlier, it's then about having the, the sort of the machine tools and the brains to mine that for intelligence that you can then use to ultimately put propositions in front of the customers at the right time they're going to be attractive to them. Sure. You know, if you, for example, have consistently sent uh, emails where someone had the opportunity to click about Ferrari and they've never clicked about Ferrari, then you can reasonably assume after three or four efforts that they're probably not interested in Ferrari. So you can make sure that they don't get stuff about Ferrari or even that in uh, uh, an intelligent email with four slots, one of the four slots is not taken up with uh, Ferrari. Sure. Uh, it's a simple example, but it's, it's about using, mm -hmm. don't just gather it for the sake of it, because all you do then is create a sort of security risk unnecessarily, but if you've got it, use it and use it intelligently. And I guess for us, uh, a, a key example, and to some extent it's a bit of an old fashioned technology, is email. Email is, is by far and away our best way of communicating with customers. Really? Customers tell yeah. us they like it. Um, over 60% of customers open our emails, which is Very a, a rate I've never heard of in, in other industries I've mm. worked in, and less than 0.2% of customers unsubscribe from our emails. Uh, so we believe that the effort we've put into the data that's producing a well-targeted email, the money we spend on writing it well, on designing it well, and delivering it well is paying off for us, and customers are voting with their, with their mouse clicks in terms of opening it and reading it. Well, there's certainly exceptional figures, no doubt about that. And last question to you, this is a bit off the wall, and away from what we're talking about, and it could be you as a person, you personally or, or whatever, you, however you want to answer this, but what sort of a car do you think the top end of the market that you're, uh, you're addressing are going to be driving in, say, 10, 20, 30 years' time? I don't, by that, I don't mean to say a Ferrari or a Maserati or whatever it might be, never mind the brand. What kind of a car is it going to be? What's it going to be for? There's going to be the thrill of the ride, sure, yeah. and the acceleration and the BHP and everything else. But what else? Because by that time, it's going to be very difficult to tell the difference between what's happening within a vehicle and what's happening within your home, what's happening within your office, and what's happening when you're out on the street. Well, I, I go back to what I said at the beginning. Our customers are, first and foremost, these wealthy petrol heads. It mm. is about the experience of the drive. Mm. Um, so I think they're going to be driving cars that are fun and exciting and involving to drive. And actually, if you think about one direction of cars, the sort of everyday cars, the systems that are being put in, are really trying to make it as easy as possible to drive those. But equally, you know, if you step into a Ferrari and start turning off the <laughs> electronic systems, it gets more and more exciting. And I think our manufacturers are still gonna, are gonna continue to play on that edge. If you take a technology like uh, electric cars, Electric cars we all think of as Priuses driving around the cities and, mm. and producing less uh, emissions. But you look at the new LaFerrari, which is a hybrid system with uh, um, the, the Curs. It was a, an F1-derived uh, battery-powered system. Electric car there is being deployed to project you from 0 to 60 faster than ever before because, of course, bat uh, electric motors have instant 100% instant yeah. torque. Absolutely. So electric yeah. motors in our part of the market can be used to make extremely exciting cars as well as cars that are also more efficient and, and less emissive. So I think we're going to be driving exciting cars using full electricity, hybrid, all sorts of technologies, but they're still going to be great to drive. Really interesting stuff. Chris Harris, thank you. Thank you.